ending our service, literally the last service of the year. By the time that we end today's service, we're going to be entering into 2021. And I don't know about you guys, I was just, as I was praying, uh, tears were coming down my face. My heart was so full of gratitude to the Lord because of all the mercy that he has had during this year. I think the best way for us to, to give him honor at this moment is for us just to say thank you. Just for us to say thank you, for us to worship him, for us to glorify his name. We thank God in 2020. We thank him tonight. We thank him, we thank him. God, we're so grateful. God, we're so grateful. We're thankful, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you, Lord, because we didn't deserve one bit of that grace. We didn't deserve one bit of that mercy, Lord. And yet you were merciful with us, Lord. You had compassion upon us, Lord. You looked at us with love. You raised us up from where we were fallen. You restored us from where we were broken. You healed us from where we were wounded. You set us free from where we were bound, God. Thank you. Thank you. You provided. You provided. We didn't go hungry. We didn't go hungry. We didn't lose the place we live right now, Lord. We have roofs over our head. We have clothes on our skin. Thank you, God. All of it was because of your faithfulness. All of it was because of your kindness. All of it was because of your mercy, God. And we just thank you, Lord. We give you the glory. We bless your name. We are so grateful for all that you have done and all that you're continuing to do. Lord, we stand now in awe. We stand now in expectation, waiting, knowing that 2021 that if we came through 2020, we'll make it through 2021. That if you were faithful in 2020, you will be faithful in 2021. God, that if you did what you did in this year, Lord, then we can expect and we know that we'll see your hand. For you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you, Lord. We glorify you. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Our hearts can do nothing else but worship you, Lord. Father's filled with gratitude. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name. We give you the glory, Jesus. Father, I declare in the name of Jesus. That in this place and those who are connected with us online, Father, that tonight your presence will be strong upon us, Lord. Father, that there will be a touch from you, Lord. And I pray for deliverance. I pray for healing. I pray for salvation. I pray for restoration. I pray for transformation. I pray for change, Lord. And I declare, God, that mindsets would begin to shift and change. Lord, as we move into this new year, that the things from our past, we would leave it behind and we move in with a new heart, with a new focus, with a new attitude. We give you the glory, God, and we bless your name. Church, let us worship. grace. Thank you for your mercy. Hallelujah. You are good. You are good. You are good. And we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you. Hallelujah. Thank you for your for your mercy. 
you for your mercy. Thank you for your love and your peace that surpasses understanding. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Hey. Everything is prepared for you. My house and my heart too. The Simply just to worship you. Your children are alive. And now there are more than we or two. So Yours is the kingdom of glory forever. Yours is dominion and power. Amen. Amen. Yours is the kingdom the glory forever. Yours is dominion and power.
to stay here in this place all of the days of my life.
your amazing Walk away. Oh, I can walk away. For I have seen your face. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I can walk away. I can't get enough. Your amazing love, yeah. Jesus, I can get enough. I can walk away. I can walk away.
to want to be near your heart. Because there is nothing like your love, Jesus. There's nothing like your love, Jesus. There is nothing like your love. I just want to be where you are. Who wanna be near your heart? Hallelujah. Cause there is nothing like your love. There is nothing like your love. I just wanna be Lord. I just wanna be where you are. I wanna get close to you, Lord. Closer, 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 God. There is nothing yeah. like your love. There is nothing like your love, God. There is nothing like your love. We join with the angels. We sing that you are holy, holy, holy. We join with the angels. We join with heaven. We join with heaven. And we feel, we feel the tune with our worship. We sing holy. We sing holy. You're holy. You are holy, Lord.
everywhere we go we want to show who you are be like you are cause Jesus we love you Jesus we love you we want to be like you are we want to look like you are we want to smell like you are it's who you are love it's who you Make me a house, my God. Make me. 
altar never burn off. May the fire on my altar never burn off. Fire. May 
the fire on my altar never burn out. The fire on my altar never burn 2021. out. 2021. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Fire on my hey. altar never burn out. This year's gotta be different. Never burn Come on. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. One more time. May the fire on my altar never burn out. The fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn Jesus. out. Jesus, make me a house of prayer. Come on, may the fire, may the fire, fire on my altar never burn out. Jesus, fire on my altar. Father, this song never is really a prayer. Fire on my altar never burn This song is really a prayer. It's not just a song that we're singing. It's a prayer. It's an intercession. It's a cry of our spirit. It's a cry of our hearts that we want more of God. We want his fire. We want to go deeper. We want to go deeper. We want to go farther. We want to go farther than we've ever gone before. Hey, hey. Farther than we've ever gone before. Yes, que no se apague el fuego. Hey, que no se apague el fuego. This is our prayer. This is our prayer, the cry of our spirit. Every hungry, radical child of God, this is the prayer. Lord, just like the Levites that you commanded, make sure the lamp was always filled with oil and do not allow the fire to go out. And so the sons of Levi, the priests of the temple, made sure that there was always oil in their lamps. Lord, we want the oil, and the oil is your presence. The oil is your presence, and the way to your presence is through prayer, is through worship, is through surrender, is through obedience. We will not be surprised like the five foolish virgins that had their lamps but had no oil. They had no oil. Woo! They had the religion, they had the outfits, they had the clothing, they had the right tools, but they didn't have the oil, they didn't have the oil, they didn't have the light. 2021, no, no, no more just external religion. It's the fire of God burning, flowing through us. Woo! Que no se pague el fuego. Oh, I just hear this in my heart right now. It's that you got to get tired of going up and down, of being like a yo-yo, of being like a wave tossed to and fro. You have to take a stand and you got to say, Satan, no more, no more. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. from 2021 forward I'm moving forward I'm leaving behind the things of the past I'm pressing forward toward the goal of the heavenly prize that was set before me hallelujah Woo. may the fire on my own turn never burn out the fire on my own turn never burn out of prayer Woo, uh, wow wow make me a house of prayer a place where your presence dwells and not just visits from time to time but the place where your presence remains where your glory is there where there is intimacy even if we're surrounded by people in public there's a connection there's a person there's an intimacy Hallelujah. Woo. My goodness. Oh. 
how awesome it is to be able to give God worship as we close 2020. Let's get into the Word of God. And I, and I want to begin today's message by saying that for the last few years, if you guys have noticed, before every New Year's, I ask the Lord if there's something specific that he wants me to tell the church for the next upcoming year. And since I have started doing this, I have noticed that each year, God has given me descriptions of what the previous year was about, or he's given me themes that the church should focus on for the next upcoming year, or what he is going to do in the upcoming year. And let me say that since I started pastoring, here is the list of things that God has placed in my heart for each year, either to describe the year or to tell us what he's going to do or to tell us what is it that we need to focus on. So if you guys notice in 2015, what God was doing in our church was bringing healing and restoration. In 2016, God began laying the foundation for what he was going to do in this congregation. In 2017, we had a year full of trainings and foundations through a lot of education, conferences, everything that we could do. And then 2018, God started to put in our hearts to focus on evangelism and to expect a harvest. In 2019... What God placed in my heart was for us to focus on multiplication and the glory of God. And then last year, and I'm glad for Justin's message because he brought it up when he was bringing up different prophecies and for us to uh, discern whether they came from the Lord or not. And he brought up the fact last year I mentioned fruit. He didn't say my name, by the way. Sorry. Uh, he mentioned fruitfulness and fulfillment. And, you know, and I thought about it and I was like, oh my goodness, Lord. Did that word come to pass or did we get to focus on it and do what you were calling us to do? And after hearing all these testimonies, I was able to get a confirmation now. But I already had it in my heart. I already knew that the Lord was already. How many people during this year picked up a new hobby that they didn't before? How many gained a new talent that they didn't before? How many went further in what they were doing before? How many started new jobs that they weren't having before? How many were able to get more training, education, or how many God provided for them when they didn't have any natural way of supposed to have an income? So when I thought about that, I was like, yes. I said, Justin, you put me on the spot, but the Lord is good. And we were still able to see fruitfulness and fulfillment and and even us um, come on we had to learn how to do all this live streaming cameras uh obs zoom uh facebook live, every, all of this stuff we learn and you know what god has done through through the pandemic he has forced a church that was used to four walls to get into an atmosphere and environment where the gospel of Jesus Christ can now go to people without limitation of where the voice travels because it's going through the internet right into people's homes, into their phones, into their computers, and into their television. So this year, we have seen fruitfulness and fulfillment. So this year... <laughs> For 2021, I asked the Lord again. This is a scary thing, because especially after your message, bro. I asked the Lord again if he had a word for our church, our congregation. And what I speak doesn't have to go for every church. This is for this church. If you're a part of this church, if you're connected here, this is what God is speaking to us. And let me tell you, when I asked, I received the word immediately. Which that doesn't always happen when God answers me. Sometimes you got to fight for that answer. But this one came immediately to my spirit. And here's the word that God gave me for 2021. The word is faithfulness. Faithfulness. I sense the spirit of God. God desires two things from us this year. And it's to trust in his faithfulness. And for us to be faithful to him. 
I'm going to say that again. God wants us this year to do two things. And it's number one, to trust in his faithfulness. And number two, for us to be faithful to him. So I want to speak to you guys today a message about faithfulness. And the title is, Be Faithful. Be Faithful. I want us to go to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25. And I hope and pray that I can finish this message before 12 o'clock. I think I will. God is faithful. <laughs> Woo! That's how you do it. You see that? There you go. Edward did the ultimate transition from the from the worship to the offering, and I'm doing <laughs> All right. Matthew chapter 25. We're going to read just one verse to start off. For everyone who has more shall be given, and he will have in abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he does not have shall be taken away. Let's pray. Father, the word that you placed in my heart, I just ask you in Jesus' name, that the intensity and anointing I felt while I wrote this message, Lord, that you would allow me to preach it with your power and with your fire and that the hearts of those who are listening would receive it and apply it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The verse that we read comes from a parable Jesus spoke to his disciples, his disciples, his followers. A parable is a short story or illustration that teaches a lesson or has some type of moral. And this parable specifically is to teach us about stewardship and faithfulness. Stewardship and faithfulness. This parable also communicates the rewards of being a good steward and being faithful to God. But it also communicates the consequences of being a bad steward and being unfaithful to God. This is how Jesus begins this parable, this story that is to teach us a lesson. If you look at verses 14 and 15, it says, For it is just like a man about to go on a journey, who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and another one, and each according to his own ability, and he went on his journey. Here's the first thing that we need to know about this parable that Jesus is speaking here. First, he is speaking this parable in response to some questions that his disciples had made to him concerning the end times. And in this parable, Jesus is reflecting himself in the man who is about to go on a journey and who entrusted his possessions to his slaves. Jesus knew that after he died for our sins and rose from the dead, that he would leave the earth and go once again into heaven until it was time for him to return to the earth again. And Jesus was going to entrust into the hands of his disciples a mission, his mission, his message. They were to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation, the good news of forgiveness and salvation through Jesus Christ. And they were also to go out into all the world and make disciples of all the nations. Now, in this parable, the man who is doing, the man who is going away on this journey leaves his slaves talents. Talents were measurements of money. Can everybody say cha-ching? Cha-ching. A talent was a measurement of money. Cha-ching. According to, Guzik, to the Guzik commentary, one talent today would be worth $1,200. Better than that $600 stimulus check. All right, let me, let me, let's not get into that. So 
this rich man, this master, left one of his slaves, the first one, five talents. Today, that would be $6,000. How many would want $6,000 in your hands? Mm. To the second slave, he left two talents, which today would be $2,400. And to the third slave, he left one talent, which is, again, $1,200. Now, I want you to notice something else about what this rich man did. The Bible says that he gave talents or he gave this money to each one according to his ability. In other words, this master knew his slaves well enough that he knew that they could handle what he was giving to them. He knew with how much they could be entrusted with. He knew what each one was capable of doing with the money that he entrusted to them. He did not give the one talent slave five talents because he knew that that would overwhelm that one talent slave and he would probably waste the money. Notice that he didn't give the five talent slaves slave two talents because he knew that he would be undermining his potential and possibly boring this five talent slave or causing him not to do his best because it wasn't a big enough challenge. No, this wise master didn't do any of that. He gave the five talent slave five talents. He gave the two talent slave two talents. And he gave the one talent slave one talent because he gave them according to their Say ability, according to their ability. There was no racism here. There was no discrimination here. There was no injustice here. BLM didn't have to come and fight for their rights. The master knew exactly what his slaves should receive because he knew what they could handle. Can I tell you something? We don't have earthly masters, but we do have a heavenly master. His name is Jesus. He is God, and he knows us better than we know ourselves. As I once heard or read a preacher say, how many of you know how many hairs are on your head? How many of you know? Anybody know? I don't have to calculate as much as some of you, but even, even me, I don't know how many hairs are on my head. But can I tell you somebody who does know? Somebody does know how many hairs I have on my head. And he is God. God knows us better than we know ourselves. God knows us intimately and he knows us personally. And he deposited in us resources, talents, abilities, gifts, relationships, challenges, and opportunities. So not only does God know what he gave us. He knows what we were created for. He knows our purpose. He designed us and created a blueprint of the type of person that he wanted us to be and what it is that he wanted us to do and gave us the qualities so that we would need that we would need in order to fulfill our purpose and our calling. So let me tell you that when God created us, he already knew what family we would be born into. When God created us, he knew what difficulties we would face. When God created us, he knew what opposition we would encounter. When God created us, he knew what challenges we would need to overcome in order to fulfill his plan and his purpose for our lives. And then he gave us characteristics and abilities and gifts and knowledge according to what we could handle and what we need to accomplish in order to fulfill his destiny for our lives. And so I want you to say with me right now, there is nothing I cannot handle. There is nothing I cannot overcome if I have God's strength. I can do all things through Christ, who gives me strength. Amen. 
Amen. He gave us according to our ability, and there's nothing that he's called us to do that he also haven't given us the equipment and the tools and the ability and the resources to be able to accomplish. So let's return to the story. Jesus continues on, and he says, look at verses 16 through 19. Immediately, the one who had received the five talents went and traded with them and gave five more talents. In the same manner, the one who had received the two talents gained two more. But he who received the one talent went away and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. What do we learn from these verses? The slaves with five talents and two talents got to work and multiplied the money that was entrusted to them. They used the best of their ability to increase what the master had left in their care. But the slave with one talent did not honor his master. He did not get to work to reproduce what was placed in his hands. He, did, he hid his master's money. But Jesus says that the master came back after a long time and he called his slaves to himself in order to settle accounts. In other words, he called them to himself so that they would give an account of what they did with the money that he put in their hands. We must never forget that just like this master in this parable, our master Jesus Christ is coming back one day. When he does, we will all stand before him. We will all have to give an account to God for what we did with this life that he gave to us. Of what we did with the time that he gave us. Of what we did with the talents that he gave to us. We will all stand before God in judgment. No man will be able to skip this appointment or arrive late. No man will have his mother or his father, or his brother, or his sister, or the pastor, or a friend, stand before God on their behalf. No, every man and every woman will stand before Almighty God, before the holy presence of God, and face judgment for what they did, what they said, what were their motives, and even what they thought. The question is, when Jesus comes, will you and I be ready? When you stand before God in judgment, will you be ready? You will not be able to hide behind your good deeds. You will not be able to justify your sins before God. His eyes of burning fire will burn right through your lies. His word will penetrate our lives and separate truth from lie, soul from spirit, bone from marrow, and will even judge the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. Church, I need you to know that Jesus Christ is coming back again. And when he does, we must be ready. We must be washed in the blood. We must be born again. We must live a holy and a faithful life let me tell you, we are not saved by works, but our works demonstrate our faith. Without peace and without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. So Jesus continues and lets us know what happens next after these servants are brought before the master. Read verses 20 to 23. The one who had received the five talents came up and brought five more talents saying, Master... You entrusted five talents to me. See, I have gained five more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Verse 22. Also the one who had received the two talents came up and said, master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I have gained two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy 
of your master. Notice what the master said to the slaves who got to work and multiplied their talents. He told them, well done, good and faithful. See, faithful. Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter the joy of your master. The slaves who did their master's will and honored their master by handling well the talents that he entrusted to them were called good and faithful. And what was their reward? They would be put in charge of many things and they would be allowed to enter the joy of their master. I want to tell you that if you use what God has given you, if you do your best to use what God has given you to bring him glory and to fulfill his plan and his purpose for your life, you will be considered good and faithful by God. Not only that, you will experience a promotion and be trusted to be in charge of many things. And not only that, but you will experience God's joy and his presence. Notice that the master did not judge the slaves based on what the other slaves did or didn't do. He did not say to the two-talent slave, why didn't you produce ten talents like the five-talent slave? I'm sorry, but what you did, it wasn't good enough. <laughs> no, he didn't say that to the two-talent slave. No, notice that he did not tell the five-talent slave, hey, buddy, I'm so proud of you. You did more and better than the other two slaves. I knew you could do it. You were always my favorite. No, he didn't say that to the five-talent slave. Yet, both the five-talent slave and the two-talent slave both received the same affirmation of being good and faithful. They were both also promised the same rewards of more authority and responsibility and the privilege of the master's joy. They both received the same rewards because their master did not judge them according to their results, but according to their faithfulness. Why am I bringing this to our attention? Because God is not going to judge you and me based on someone else's life. He is not going to compare you to this brother or to that sister who did more or who did less than you. He will not determine if you were good and faithful based if you did more than what someone else did. He is not going to determine if you were unfaithful based on if you did less than what someone else did. God is not going to judge you based on the person next to you. He is going to judge you based on your own faithfulness. He is going to judge you based on your own ability. He does not expect for you to preach like me. God does not expect for you to sing like Chela. God does not expect for you and me to be able to teach or to play like Justin. Yeah. Ooh. God expects that you would be faithful according to what he has called you to do and the abilities that he has placed in your life. Don't try to be like anybody else. He made you unique because you won't be able to do what he called you to do in a way that only you could do it. You're the only one who's going to be able to do what he called you to do in the way that he called you to do it. There's people that you could reach that I can. There's things that you can do that I can. And there's things that I can do that you can't. And the question is, are we being faithful according to the ability that God has given to each of us? We need to learn to appreciate and celebrate our differences. We are not called to make everyone like us or for us to copy anyone else or for us to compete with anyone else. 
We are called to be like Jesus, to live as like people created in the image and likeness of God. We were created to glorify God with our lives according to our abilities and resources and relationships that God has given to each of us. If you do, if you all do this in life, you will be faithful to what he's created you to be. And let me tell you this. If all you do in your life is be a mother who raises her children well, and you don't get to graduate with a doctor's degree or have a prosperous career or ministry in heaven and before God's eyes, you will be more honored and celebrated than the person who accomplishes everything that this world considers success, yet lived in disobedience to God and out of God's perfect will for their lives. God wants your faithfulness, not your success. God wants your obedience, not your sacrifices. God wants your heart, not your religion. Now, if we come back to the story, what happened... (laughs) To the slave with one talent. Let's look at verses 24 to 28. And the one also who had received one talent came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered and gathering where you scattered no seed. And I was afraid and went away and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, You wicked lazy slave you knew that i reap where i did not sow and gather where i scattered no seed then you ought to have put my money in the bank and on my arrival i would have received my money back with interest therefore take away the talent from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents oh my goodness the one talent slave was confronted, rebuked, and punished by his master. Why? It wasn't because he didn't produce as many talents as the five-talent slave or the two-talent slave. It was because he wasn't faithful with what his master put in his hands. He wasted an opportunity to honor his master. His master trusted him with one talent according to his ability, and the slave violated that trust. Do you know why he did it? You know why? Why did he do it? Well, let me tell you, I believe that this one talent slave who the master calls worthless and lazy Why is it that he was unfaithful? It is my opinion that the answer is in verses 24 and 25. And here's what we see in verses 24 and 25. He saw his master in a negative light and was afraid of him. Notice what it says there. He saw his master in a negative light and he was afraid of him. And he went and he hid the talent. Can I tell you? That how you see God will affect how you serve God. Can I tell you that how you feel about God will affect how you worship God? You cannot rise above your view and understanding of God. If you think God is this evil, demanding, unfaithful, impersonal God, then you will not trust him. You will not love him. You will not go above and beyond for him. You will not give your best, and you will not be faithful to him. There are so many people that see God this way because he hasn't answered their prayers the way Or in the time that they wanted him to answer their prayers. And I know about people like that because I was one of them. There are people that cannot trust God because they feel God has failed them. There are people that do not come to God because they believe he's going to condemn them. And send fire upon them in judgment if they open up about their sins and their weaknesses. 
I believe that this is the reason why this slave was unfaithful. He believed his master was a hard man, a dishonest man, a demanding man, and he was afraid of him. So why would he do anything for him? Why would he go above and beyond to serve him according to his ability? Let me tell you, you cannot serve God out of this religious, carnal, or demonic fear. Yes, we must fear God, and the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, but the biblical fear of God is love plus respect plus obedience. The biblical fear of God is love plus respect plus obedience. Demonic fear, worldly fear, leads you away from God. But the true fear of the Lord brings you to your knees before his presence. But can I tell you something? I don't believe the master was like this at all. <laughs> That's what the slave said, but the master really wasn't that way. Notice the master didn't correct him, but I don't believe the master was really like this, especially if in this story, the master represents Jesus. The problem of this slave wasn't his master, it was his own heart. <laughs> and it is the same with us. The real problem is in God. The real problem is us. The problem is our own hearts. We have misjudged God based on worldly philosophies and logic. We have misjudged God based on false expectations not being fulfilled. We have misjudged God based on carnal and demonic desires and temptations. I believe that God wants us to know that this year, we are to focus on being faithful. But if we're going to be faithful to God, we must first begin with how we see God and how is it that we relate to him. And if we will repent and renew our minds, we will see that the more we get to know the true God from the Bible, the more we will fall in love with him and the more we will want to serve him with excellence. Come on. Yeah, go ahead. Just give God glory. The more you really get to know him, the more you love him. The more you get to know him, the more you want to serve him. The more you know him, the more grateful you are. I'm so glad that Jesus is the image of God because God has gotten a bad reputation because of what happened in the Old Testament. But I'm so glad that Jesus came and said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. What the world is telling you, what the devil is telling you, that God is this judgmental guy in heaven trying to kill sinners. Let me tell you that in Jesus Christ, the compassion and love you see in him is the same compassion and love that there is in God. And the same fire and judgment that was in God in the Old Testament is also in Christ in the New Testament. It is the same God. It is the same God. I want to I conclude by reading the last verses of this parable, verses 29 to 30. Jesus finishes the parable with these words. For to everyone who has, more shall be given, and he will have in abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have shall be taken away. Throw out the worthless slave into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I want to exhort everyone here today and anyone who is watching online, I want to exhort you to be faithful. We need to be faithful. Let me tell you what faithfulness. Faithfulness is persevering obedience to God's will. What is faithfulness? It's persevering obedience to God's will. You know what perseverance says? Perseverance says, it doesn't matter how hard it gets, I'm still going to do it. It doesn't matter how much it hurts me, I'm still going to do it. It doesn't matter how much is coming against me, I'm still going to do it. It doesn't matter how much they want to push me down, I'm still going to stand. It's a persevering, it's an obedience to God in the midst of opposition, in the midst of difficulty. God has called us to faithfulness. Faithfulness is a persevering obedience to the will of God. Faithfulness will be the key to seeing more of God. Faithfulness will be the key to promotion in God's kingdom. 
And as a famous hymn says, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. I love that hymn. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. God, let us be on our feet. God is calling this church to faithfulness. This is going to be a year where, where we're going to do a lot of things. God is going to challenge us in many ways, but we have to have a persevering obedience to his will. We have to say, man, whatever I didn't do in 2020 because we were locked down, I'm going to come out with more fire. I'm going to come out with more desire. I'm going to do better and with more excellence because I all, all 2020 was was a preparation for me to be able to go forward and launch into what God has called me to do. 2020 was a training. Now the real stage is coming. 2021 has to be a year where we say, whatever I didn't give before, I'm giving it now. We're not going to be like the one talent slave. We're going to be the two talent or the five talent slave. And let me tell you, if you got a one talent only, if there's only one thing you know how to do, you do that one thing. If the only thing you know how to do is play the maraca, then you play that to the glory of God. If the only thing you know how to do is, is give somebody an envelope, you give them the envelope. If all you know how to do is play one key on the piano, play that key till the key falls off. But you do it for the glory of God. I don't care what one talent or two talent or five talents you have. Give God the best this year. Give God excellence this year. God, oh my God. Give God everything that you have in 2021. It's better for us to die knowing we gave it all than for us to go into heaven knowing we could have given more. 